Welcome back to our series where we create a small blog in Blazor. Now so far we've set up our Visual Studio application, we've integrated Entity Framework and we set up the queries. Now we've saved the best to last, in this video we're going to be building up our category and post pages in Blazor. Now if you wish to download the code or the database and follow along at home, you can do. There's a link on the screen for you now. So now we're going to build up our Blazor application. But first we need to make a change to the post service. What we want to do is when we show the post in Blazor, we want to show all the categories as well. However, we can't do that at the moment because the get async method doesn't include the post categories in the query. So we need to go ahead and make that change. So now in the query, it includes the post categories and then includes the category within that. That basically means now that we can access the category when we call this method. So we can access the post and the category. Let's go ahead now and build up our Blazor application. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to delete the index razor component. Now what we're going to do is when we build up our category razor component, we're going to build all the posts in there and we're also going to use that on our home page. We'll do that later on in the video. But first, I want to build up the navigation menu. So this is what sits on the left hand side and what that will display is a list of all the categories which can be linked to. The first thing we need to do is we need to inject the relevant services. So in this instance, we don't need the post service, so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to get rid of all the assemblies that are related to the post. We're just going to have the category in there. The next job is that we need to override the on parameters async. We need to make it asynchronous and change the base to await for that to work. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a new category and a new property and this new property will store all the categories that will be displayed in the navigation menu. So we're going to give that a name of categories and that's that. The next thing we need to do is we need to populate that property with all the categories. Let's go ahead and do that. So we use our category service and we're using the get all async method. Now we need to populate that into our razor component and the first thing we need to do is to do a null check. Now the reason for a null check is because when the razor component initially loads there won't be any data so it will actually throw an error. So let's go ahead and do that. Next we need to loop through each category and populate it to a page. It would be displayed as a link and the name. So let's call that category. So for each category and categories we're going to add it into an li class And then we're going to give it a link. Now we're going to mirror the link that we're going to be using for our category razor component later on in the video. So it's going to be category forward slash category dot ID. And then last thing we need to do is just put the category name in there. So the link has actually got a name to it. Let's go ahead and run that and see if it's worked. As you can see, we've got our categories displaying on the left hand side now. They've all got links to them, all categories. But as you can see, it's still saying, sorry, there's nothing at this address. Basically, we haven't got any Razor components at the moment. So what's happening, if we go back into our app Razor component, it's going through this router property here, and it's saying it's not found. So it's displaying, sorry, there's nothing wrong at this address. So now we're going to go about fixing this not found issue. So let's go ahead. What we need to do is we need to create our category page razor component. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So we're going to right click on pages, go to add, click on new item, find razor component, and then we need to give it a name. Let's call it category page dot razor. Click on add. 
next thing we need to do is we need to use our page keyword. Now this is basically how the routing works. So we are going to have two page keywords in here. We're going to have one for forward slash. So it hits this razor component when the home page is loaded. And also we've got one for category. As you can see, it mirrors the URL that we gave it in the navigation menu. Next thing we need to do is create a couple of parameters inside our code snippet. So let's go ahead and do that now. First one we need to do is to have a property that stores the ID that's been passed in through the endpoint. We need to give it a parameter attribute. We also need to set up a property for the category. And before we do that, we need to inject our services and assemblies into our Razor component. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we go, here's our property set up for our category. And lastly, we need to set up a property to store all the posts. There we go. So we now need to populate the category and the post. To do that, we're gonna override and we're gonna check out one of the other methods this time. Let's check out on initialized async. Let's make it asynchronous and change that to await as before. First things first, we want to populate the category. Now we're only gonna be able to populate the category if an ID exists. So if we're going through the home page, there's not gonna be an ID there. So we need to do a check on that. So we do a check on the ID and then we go category. We call on our category service, so we need to await it. Get async, pass in the ID. We then now need to call in our posts. So for that, we use our post service. We've got our get all async, and we can at this stage pass in the ID as well. And that's that, that should be working for us now. Last thing we need to do though, is we need to populate our category properties into our Razor component. So let's change and give the title the category name. We also need to do a null check around that because if it's on the home page, it will not work. We then need to do a null check around the posts as well. And we're gonna loop through each post and display it. So we're gonna wrap each post around a div. Let's give it a title, post.title. Let's give it some other stuff as well. Let's get the uh, published date. So we can store that, format the date for it, and then show the actual content that we're populating. There we go. So that's all done. Let's give it a run and see if it works. So as you can see, our posts are populating. Let's have a click around the categories to see if they're working. Oh no, they don't seem to be working. The posts don't seem to be updating and the category doesn't seem to be displayed. Why is this? Well, it's because of the method that we're using in our code snippet. We're using on initialized async, but the problem with that is that when we're navigating through, we're still on the same Razor component. We're still on category page. So it's not firing that method. So what we need to do is we need to use the on parameters set async. So we're gonna go ahead and make that change. A couple of changes to make. Let's rerun it again and see if it solves our issue. So yeah, it's loaded the home page. It's showing all the posts. Let's click through our categories. As you can see now, it's showing Blazor, all the, type, all the posts for Blazor, Entity Framework once again, and SQL Server. 
So now we want to create our post razor component. But first, I want to make a few changes to the category razor component. Let's go ahead and stop the application and do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to wrap a link around the post title. Let's follow a similar format to the category and call it post with a post ID. Let's also restrict the content to 100 characters. So the point in this is to entice the user to actually click through to the post if they're interested. With that aside, let's create the post razor component. Let's once again select razor component and give it a name of post page. Now the reason why I don't call it post is that it conflicts with the entity here and we don't want that. So once again, let's use our page keyword. Let's mirror what we did with the categories and call it post and pass in an ID of integer as a parameter. Next thing we need to do is to inject the relevant services. I'm not sure if we're going to need category at the moment, but we'll leave it in here just in case. Next thing we need to do is we need to pass in our integer parameter. So we go through to our category page and then copy it over. So that is passing that into that. Lastly, we need a property to store our post. And then we're going to use our override on the on parameters set async once again. We need to make it async. And now we're going to do a null check. So if the ID has a value, we're going to pass it. We're going to get the post. And we're going to use our post service. So the post service that we've injected up there, we're going to use in here. Get async, and it's going to be the value of the ID. And that's pretty much that. We just need to go ahead and populate our post information. So once again, we're going to do a null check. Check that post is actually referenced to something. I'm going to go ahead, set the title. We're also going to have the publish date. Format the date. And we're going to store the content. Now one final thing is that I want to display all the categories. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do here is do a null reference to see if we've got any post categories inside the post. And then we're going to wrap it around in a UI tag. So we're going to have a loop through each post categories. And then for each one, we're going to check and see if we've actually got a category stored. So whether that's been set or not. And if it has, we're going to go ahead and post the category name. Like so. Cool. That should all be sorted. Let's go ahead and see if our Razor component works. So here we go, we've got the home page here, we've got our categories, we can see our posts are now being linked, let's click on one of them. So there you go, it's listed the categories up there, SQL is great as the title and all the content for that post. Let's select one that's got two categories. So there we go, Blazor and Entity Framework is assigned to this post. So you can see both categories have been displayed for this. Now lastly, we want to link back to those categories. So we're going to append a link around them. So let's get the ID in there. Wrap it around properly. 
and let's try that again and see if that works. So let's click on one of the posts. Let's go back and let's keep on doing that. As you can see, it all seems to be working. So job well done. So if you've got any comments or suggestions, let me know, get in contact with me. And for more .NET articles, visit roundthecode.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube. And follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. And I will see you on the next video.